Hello there my friends, welcome to Nanaba's Kitchen and if you just stopped by for the first time today, the warmest welcome to you and thank you so much for doing so. And to my subscribers, thank you, thank you over and over again for all the love and all the support, the beautiful comments that just uplift me. I thank you so much. On the menu today is our gan, komi kenan shito, which is another version of shito, a condiment raining from Ghana, West Africa, served with several, a variety of different dishes. It is very delicious and comparable to Chinese chili oil. So when you go to your Chinese restaurant and order uh, fried rice, for example, and you want a kick, a little spice to it, and you ask for the chili oil to be drizzled onto it, this is very similar to that. It's super delicious. This version is the quickest, most delicious you'll ever try, and I am so excited. Now, I can't wait to get started, so let's do it. Yes, my friends, so Gakomi Kenai Chateau derives its name from its origin, the Ga people from the southern part of Ghana. Served with these dishes you can see on your screen right now. All of the videos to the making of these dishes are linked below in the description box, so please check them out. So first you want to prep all your ingredients before you actually begin to take that arduous production-like feel out of making Chateau. So I have 10 medium-sized shallot onions peeled and cut up and then I also have three habanero chilies for that fresh chili flavor then I have seven cloves of garlic as well and then a hundred grams of ginger peeled and cut up which should come to about half the size of your hand and then a cup of dry roasted red chilies and then I have a half a teaspoon each of aniseed and black peppercorns so those also get added then I have wintia or grains of saline which is actually available on amazon.com you guys so if you don't have an African store close by you can get it on amazon.com it is an optional um, ingredient as well now these are my homemade dry smoked shrimps I have the video also linked below it's really easy to make so I add those and I blend then I add some more because I had two cups full of those and then I drizzle a little bit of oil onto the mixture to help propel the blades of my blender because I'm really looking for a slightly coarse thick paste like uh, consistency right there just like that now we are ready for the next step so my mom is gone she comes from Osu Kinkawi, one of those tribes that originated this recipe. And she was very stern in giving me instructions on how to prepare this recipe. She said, do not add any tomatoes to this shito, or you have not made gankomi kenan shito. If you dare call it gankomi kenan shito and you added tomatoes to it, hmm, the originators of this recipe will come after you. They will come after you full force. Don't add tomatoes, okay? <laughs> so I said, okay, and I'm not adding tomatoes. So please don't add any tomatoes to this chateau recipe. You want to fry it dry without the tomatoes, okay? And it's going to be equally delicious. So this oil here, I fried some fish in, and that's exactly how this recipe is made. Yes, in the homes where they make gakomi or gakinke, which is a dish made with fermented corn, steamed in corn husk, and it's served with the shito and fried fish. What they do is they reserve the, the oil in which they fry the fish and cook the shito in it. I just added some salt and I added a generous amount. The amount you add is per your own preference. Now do remember that this is a condiment that is very concentrated in flavor. Hence, the amount of shito you add has to be generous, okay? Because all you need is a small piece of shito to add to whatever you're eating and it goes a long way because it's that concentrated in terms of its flavors, okay? So yeah, I'm cooking over low heat. So I'm stirring every 10 to 15 minutes. 
yeah, I didn't have a lot of time today to sit down and just continue to stare it because that's how you want to do shit. So you want to constantly stare at the pot because you don't want it to burn. Um, however, if you cook, cook it over low heat, you also reduce the splattering. Um, and it did splatter a little bit. So yeah, I had to use my splatter guard there. Um, don't want to burn my skin. So yeah, um, cook it over low heat. Go in every 10 minutes or so. Give it a good stir. Now, if you cook it over medium heat, then yeah, you have to be present and give it that tender loving care. You want to constantly stir it, okay? So yeah, the foaming on the top tells you that it is drying up. We are almost done. At this point, we are about 45 minutes into the preparation. It's not a lot of shit I'm preparing today. So yeah, I didn't take that long. So uh, yeah, you're going to cook it until it is crunchy. Yeah, and very textured. That is not coming to my shiitake. Now I'm sure you feel pumped right now to make your own shiitake because you see that if you've seen other videos of how to make shiitake, you will agree that making shiitake can seem to be a, a whole production on its own, right? Um, but this preparation right here will change your perception, right? It takes that tediousness out of this preparation. So you'll feel pumped to make your own shit so you don't have to buy a jar one from the store anymore because you know exactly what ingredients went into the preparation. I hope I have earned your subscription. I thank you for watching. And as always, make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen.